Well, good morning, Lionhearts. If you can believe it, we actually got up and got out early today. It's 7.30 a.m. And uh, we're about six or seven blocks away from the house and it, I keep seeing what looks like mist and I can't tell if it's gonna rain or if it is raining or if it's like pollen coming out of the trees, I don't know. So we're gonna go and try and get a hike up Griffith Park, get it done early and uh, see what the day has in store for us. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I know for sure I already have to work Wednesday, so I'm trying to get as much uh, hiking in as I can, knowing that that's probably, or possibly a day that I'm not gonna be able to do anything. And every good hike needs a guy that pees on every tree, so this is my guy that pees on every tree on the hike. His name's Jaw. I don't know what's going on here, but they have totally thrown Jaw for a loop. He doesn't know where to walk. I'm walking in the grass and he refuses to come across the water, so see what happens. Come here. Hey, come over here. Good job. Wow, I can't remember the last time I was up here and there's nobody here. <sighs> Beautiful. Hey there fella, how was your hike? Did you have a good hike up here? Tell everybody you're drinking your water. Just in case you're wondering what he's looking at. Still no sun. In this calm, peaceful city, Monday morning, I don't think it's gonna stay this way too long. We gotta go back, cause I gotta call the doctor and make an appointment for uh, my uh, follow-up exam, see if I'm medically cleared for surgery. All right, we are finished. We have reached the end of the trail. Well, what I'm thinking today is maybe going to Hollywood Hills Forest Lawn Cemetery and seeing some of the celebrity graves there. Now, I know I'm not gonna see everybody, and I may even be standing two headstones away from somebody you wanted to see, but I'm going to see the people that I wanna to see today, so you don't feel the need to point out all the people that I missed. Whoa, guys, look at that. The deer. Do you guys see that? I was just driving and, wow, look at that. I haven't even got to see anything in the cemetery yet, and I'm already seeing this. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I wonder whose grave they're looking for. Well, I felt the most appropriate place to start would be actually right here, even though I didn't know Arthur was buried here. I was actually looking for Andre de Toth, and I walked right past this. Arthur is actually one of the biggest influences in my musical life. Um, I didn't even know who Love was until I moved to Los Angeles, and uh, when I went to music school, I just got into anything that was new or interesting to me, and uh, one of the things that was written about in magazines at the time was they had reissued Arthur Lee and Love's music. And uh, Arthur was, at the time, in jail. He was a three-strike offender, and um, what the last thing he got in trouble with four was uh, he found out his girlfriend was cheating on him. He showed up at her apartment and blew holes through the front door with a gun. And um, so when he got out of prison, he immediately started touring and doing love music. And I was so fortunate that I got to see love perform twice, actually. And uh, one of the funny stories is that on my very first album, Cult Satellite Relocations, um, I wrote a song and I mentioned Arthur Lee. And the night after I saw the band perform um, over at the Henry Fonda Theater, pretty close to me, Um, I was working my delivery dro job driving down Sweetser and I drove right past Arthur Lee's guitar player. 
Mikey Randall. And I pulled the car over real quick, I got out and I said, I just saw you perform last night. And he was kind of like taken aback, like worried that I might be a crazy fan or whatever. And I just said, you know, I'm a huge fan of Arthur's and um, I actually wrote a song and mentioned him in it. And I was wondering if I could give a copy of it to you and um, maybe you could give it to him. And he said, absolutely. He actually gave me his home address, which was on that street and said, drop it off anytime you want. And uh, I dropped it off to him with my email address. And uh, the next day I got an email from him saying, Jordan, I have to tell you, I love your music. It's unlike anything else out right now. And uh, I think Arthur's gonna love it. And when we go on tour, we all pick like two CDs to take with us and then we put them in the car and we do a rotation. He goes, I can absolutely promise you that you are one of my CDs. And uh, so that was just a real thrill in my life. And uh, Arthur Lee was, he was actually a predecessor to The Doors. He was the original kind of summer of love sound in Los Angeles and he actually lived right above the Whiskey A Go Go and The Doors would eventually open for him. And uh, Arthur was also, if I'm not mistaken, the very first person to ever have Jimi Hendrix on a recording. He was, Jimi Hendrix played guitar on Arthur's solo album, Vindicator, and uh, I have that at home. I'll show you a picture of the, the record when I get home, if I don't forget it. It was an absolute thrill to be walking by here and to look down and see that Arthur Lee is buried here because just a real special guy in music history. Um, if you don't know any of his music, Forever Changes is the name of the album, one of the great albums that he's known for, and it was kind of known as like the California album. Um, it was in competition with the Beach Boys, um, the Beatles, everything was kind of compared to what they were doing. And um, one of the, my favorite songs, if you just want to check out a song, look up Stephanie Knows Who. I kind of consider it to be one of the first punk songs ever. Like, it's a great song. What's in your life, dear Stephanie? What do you do this for? It's great, check it out. Anyway, I want to pay homage to Arthur. So cool to see it. God bless you, Arthur Lee. With all your faults, you're one of my heroes. Well, this one took a good half hour to find, but there's Andre de Toth the director of the 3D classic starring Vincent Price and a uh, young Charles Bashinsky before he became Charles Bronson, House of Wax. He also did uh, The Thief of Baghdad in uh, 1940 and 1942, he did The Jungle Book. Classic director. I think if I remember right, Vincent Price told a story about how it was kind of funny that he directed a 3D movie because he had vision problems and he couldn't even see in 3D. And here we found legendary player, manager, Hall of Famer. Former Yankee, Red, a man who played with Babe Ruth. Lou Gehrig, I mean that's Pretty amazing. Leo the Lip de Rocher. Pretty famous manager, too. Guy had a long time, long time career in baseball. Finally, and was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1994. Well, just as I was coming upon our next person, the security came by and told me I can't use my DSLR camera out here. I have to use my cell phone. So we found Noah Beery Jr., the nephew of Wallace Beery, the son of Noah Beery Sr., and Rocky from the Rocker Files. What a career he had. He was in tons of stuff. He was in stuff all the way up to uh, Bessel Whorehouse in Texas. Really likable actor. There you go. Take it easy, Rocky. Well, right here we found 
famed cowboy Monty Hale. Kind of ironic because look who he's buried right next to. One of the greatest of them all, if not the greatest of them all, the singing cowboy himself, Gene Autry. And uh, former owner of California Angels, what would become the Anaheim Angels, then would become the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And his beloved wife, Ina. America's favorite cowboy. The man who agreed to be in The Ghoul Goes West if Bela Lugosi was in it for Ed Wood till he read the script. American hero, philanthropist, patriot, and veteran, movie star, singer, composer, baseball fan, owner, 33rd degree mason, media entrepreneur, loving husband, and gentleman. Who wouldn't love to have all that to be known for? Not to totally make a joke, but when I saw that, the first thing I thought of was, who's the boss? One of my all-time favorite, if not favorite creator of television of all time, Stephen J. Cannell. The man responsible for the Rockford Files, my favorite, The A-Team, 21 Jump Street. I mean, just all those great shows, Hunter. All those great shows from 70s and 80s, man, it was all him. And if you, uh, if you remember, at the end of every one of his shows, it showed him typing in a typewriter and grabbing the paper and throwing it into the air to make the logo for Stephen J. Cannell Productions. So cool. Good advice too, stay true to your dream. Well there, we finally found him. It took about 20 minutes. This may be one of the longest vlogs I've ever done <laughs> to record. It's taking hours to find all these, but there he is, the uh, immortal Bobby Fuller from the Bobby Fuller 4. I fought the law on the law one on Delphi Records, same people that had Richie Valens. And uh, I will cover this one pretty soon. He was unfortunately found dead in his car in his parking space of his apartment building. Very mysterious. And here's Sabu, the star of uh, 1940 Thief of Baghdad and uh, 1942 the Jungle Book. He was Mowgli. And uh, of course Andre de Toth was the director of that, who we've already seen. Now sadly the last person that we're going to see today is actually buried here, but they're in an unmarked grave. And it was Fred Berry. The guy who played Rerun on What's Happening and What's Happening Now. The uh, eternal suspender wearing high schooler. Hilarious. I felt like uh, he should be included in here as well. I just spent five hours at the cemetery. So all I could think about doing was going to get something to eat. So I went and got a salad over at El Pollo Loco. Didn't feel like cooking anything. Didn't feel like thinking. I just drove straight there, grabbed a salad, came home. That was a long day. Cemeteries are always fun. I mean, I always enjoy going and seeing the celebrity graves and everything, but man, it takes some serious time to walk and look and walk and look. And I probably end up walking back and forth and over the same graves 10, 15 times sometimes before I finally find what I'm looking for, but... I know everybody loves them, and that makes it worth it to me. So, uh, I went to withdraw some money tonight from my bank account, and I noticed my funds were a little low. And so I logged into my Wells Fargo account and noticed that, uh, while I was working Saturday, somebody went to a Taco Bell and, uh, Mr. Bling's Gold Teeth. And uh, racked up $250 worth of charges at Mr. Bling's Gold Teeth on my card. 
File this under things that only happen to me. Good night. <laughs>